Hello everyone and welcome back to Zoo Crafting! I am Zookeeper Siri and we are here in front of the Northern Water Snake Exhibit where this adorable sign still is. I am still blown away by how adorable and cute and beautiful this sign is. Just look at it. It has a little fish in his mouth. A tiny little fish in his mouth. That is just fantastic. Ah, but today, my friends, we are going to be continuing our grand zoo tour of the Temperate Forest area. And I'm really hoping we'll also have a little building project at the end. Because we are actually closing in on kind of the edges of the Temperate Forest, at least as it's been built so far. And there is a lot more of the zoo to see, so I'm realizing that this grand zoo tour is kind of going to take a while. Not that that's a bad thing. <gasps> Not that that is a bad thing at all. What if we tour the zoo? Zoo and tour the world and tour some of the other zoo crafters areas in order to celebrate rediscovering our world. <gasps> you know why that's so exciting? Because then our 100th tree for the 100th episode of season six would be a tree made of maps. We could have a map tree. We could go around and we could view everybody's areas with some brand new maps and we could fill them in from our wandering and then we could decorate the tree with a whole bunch of picture frames and put the maps up there and how cool would that be? I love it! I love it! And it takes the pressure off to make the Grand Zoo Tour go a little faster. Though on that note, we may be doing some live streams in the future when I am not in Chicago, as I will be this weekend, and when I am not on our mysterious adventure that Chips and I are going on next month. So, not anytime soon, but if we are still doing the Grand Zoo Tour by the time Chips and I get back in August, expect a lot of live streams to try to speed things up a little bit. But I really love that idea. I love that idea of having the first like 100 episodes dedicated to just exploring the world again and leaving behind us a bunch of little builds that the Builders of Light shall do or maybe a bunch of little builds that um <clears throat> we might do today because I learned something really cool about woodpeckers. But I'll get back to that in a second. I did want to actually begin this episode with a fantastic, uh, you know, fantastic animal fact. It is in Indeed, a uh, very, very good question that has been asked from Pastelis on my Instagram. So if you guys don't know, I do have an Instagram account where I share a whole bunch of behind the scenes things and a whole bunch of clips and little screenshots from our various adventures that we go on. And when I shared this picture of the Northern Water Snake up on the Instagram, Pastelis asked, how is it that you could tell the difference between a non-venomous and harmless Northern Water Snake and a venomous water moccasin, which can indeed kill a person if you get enough venom, mostly if you have like a really allergic reaction to it as well. And that's a very good question because on the surface, the northern water snake and the water moccasin look very similar. A lot of people will try to look at animals for their patterns in order to tell the difference. But honestly, even though I know both snake species pretty well over the years, it's hard for me to tell at a glance if that is a northern water snake or a water moccasin when I I am out walking in the woods and glance down and see a snake slither by when I'm near water. And then that moment of panic, you want some more obvious traits that you can look at and you can analyze and you can go, hmm, you know, I don't have time to see if this pattern, it's not like the coral snake, for instance, where you can tell the difference between a coral snake being venomous and a non-venomous snake like the king snake, they have pattern colorations that lead to that little rhyme so that you can tell the difference pretty quickly. But I just find it really hard, especially with the color variation between a northern water snake and a water moccasin to really differentiate their patterns quickly. Experts can definitely do it. Lay people can definitely do it as well. I'm just not very good at it. So my trick for being able to tell the difference between a northern water snake and between a water moccasin is actually looking at their heads. The water Water moccasin tends to have a really blocky head that has a very angular shape to it. So that usually tips me off the fastest when I see a snake in the wild and I'm trying to make a split second decision of like, should I really be running or should I just be giving this some space and a more casual, <laughs> casual speed? Now, the other thing that a lot of people can use is looking at the actual slender shape of the northern water snake versus the more blocky and large kind of fat 
shape of the water moccasin. So basically, if you see a snake near water and you know it is an area that has both water snakes and water moccasins, and it has a pretty slender head, kind of reminds you a little bit of like a curious little worm, then it's probably just a northern water snake, especially if it has a pretty slender body and it seems pretty shy. Now, the only time that you might want to be very careful is that when northern water snakes get spooked, they will flatten themselves to the ground specifically so they can try to look more like the venomous water moccasin. So when they flatten themselves, their heads kind of become blocky, their bodies become bigger and fatter, and they look a lot like the water moccasin. So at the end of the day, the best thing you can do is just give both of them a lot of space. They both have their very important place in the ecosystem. Bites are extremely uncommon if you just leave them alone. But I just wanted to share that there are ways where you can tell the difference. So you do not need to be afraid of these northern water snakes. They are little fish eaters, frog eaters. They are doing their best just to take care of water ecosystems. And I've always found them to have kind of a shy, very cute personality that I really loved. So I hope you guys have learned a little bit Bit more about northern water snakes there's lots of different research you should do there's so much color variation in northern water snakes that's why i also find it hard to look at patterns if you're going to try to tell the difference between that and a water moccasin but basically if it's really really fat maybe a water moccasin and you still don't need to be too concerned just give it a lot of space give the snakes respectful space and we will all be just fine so there's my very long ramble i hope that butterfly is okay oh my gosh there's my very long ramble for my love of water snakes and really all snakes in general. They're all, they're, they're not things that you need to worry about. Okay, and we can go ahead and go to sleep. Lily, you can go ahead and stay here with Kuno. I'm going to go ahead and go to sleep since we're going into a more, um, more wild section of the temperate forest in just a second here. And that actually reminds me, we probably need to make some tents. Hi, Aster Seed. If you want to stay there, I'll be back in just a little bit. Don't let the red wolves scare you. I'm gonna jump into my bed inside of the zookeeper station. Yay! Dun 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 dun. That's not so bad a walk. Ugh. I love my vines, but sometimes they get a little out of hand. So we'll scooch that over. Go ahead and climb into bed. But yeah, and if I seem to ramble on a while about snakes, it's because I feel very strongly about them as a species. I really love people to give them a lot of respect and respectful space. And it really makes me sad when I hear people like, this is a dangerous snake, and they like kill it when it was not even a like copperhead or a water moccasin. It was just a little harmless northern water snake. You, you just leave them be. They just want to eat fish. They just want to eat fish and they're really, really sweet. I loved watching the ones that we had in North Carolina. I haven't seen any around here because we live in Michigan now, <sighs> but that's okay. All right, Lily, Kuno. <sighs> to be honest, Lily, you seem like you're having a really great time hanging out with Kuno. Both of your tails are wagging so hard, and Kuno is actually one of the guest puppers that we have from one of the Builders of Light. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys stay here and play for a little bit longer, okay? All right. Meanwhile, let us carry on the tour, my friends. We have made it so far past the lily pad bridge. I haven't even gotten to the Tate and Tackle yet. We'll have to double back for that. We have gone past the Red Wolf Sanctuary, the Temperate Forest Zookeeper Station. We have seen the White Tail Deer exhibit, a couple of the really awesome observatories. And now we are heading in to some new territory where we have one of my favorite little shops that I actually need to set up so it can be uh, so it can be released. The picnic pickup area. Isn't it so cute? Look at this place. This is one of my favorite places in the zoo because I worked really, really hard to make it. I am so proud of my divincing skills with this tiny little sign. And we have a really cute little setup with a napkin and we have ketchup and mustard on either side. You can actually get ketchup and mustard here. You can get napkins, you can get ketchup, mustard, and mayo. So if you want to have anything on your little picnic, those are your condiments and you can come over. I just love that. I love that you can get some actual condiments to go with whatever food you get. We have a cute little bench and as you can see the picnic pickup area is currently not opened for business but hopefully it will be soon. I need to have an NPC here and then I just need to have like a little sign that people can read like how to how to pay. I'm thinking I'm thinking because I manually make these. Uh, yeah still setting up shop 
what we do is we have all of these little picnic uh, baskets or little picnic bags that you can come and get known as little picnic baskets. And when you open them up, look at how cute it is. We have little picnic blankets put on either side. And then we have some food that I actually made myself that people can come get. So I'm trying to figure out how people can pay for the picnic baskets. And I think it might be on a barter system perhaps. So we might have a, a person over here and they're like, we're pretty laid back here in the picnic pickup zone and we might have another chest uh maybe over here where people can pay and it'll be like the cash register where you can just like leave what you feel is fair for the uh picnic supplies that you can get which really it shouldn't be too much but we have like yutsu candy hidden forest strawberry jam which you guys helped to name cornbread mini muffins, fresh tossed tomato salad, cherry juice, chips is crispy corn cobs because chips in real life absolutely loves eating corn on the cob. We have a couple cherries so you can have a little fruit, more mini muffins and raisins. As you can see, it's not like a complicated dish. It's just something yummy and a whole bunch of those foods don't even fill you up that much, but it makes for a nice little picnic. So you can come over, you can eat your little picnic, you could put it inside of your zoo bag if you have a zoo bag with you so that you've got food for the grand tour and all of the running around you can do and I absolutely love making the food so after somebody takes out all of the food then they go ahead and return the picnic basket here and then I'll come over collect the picnic basket and refill it with goodies when the time comes so I'm really looking forward to actually having people use this <laughs> but I need to finish setting it up oh I just have like cake and strawberries and apples in here what okay I need to I clearly need to finish cooking some of these, but this is a good example of what we will do during our zoo kitchen episodes that I hope to have in the future, where we will pop back to my house, we will cook up a bunch of delicious food, maybe some wild harvested mushrooms and other things we've gathered from the uh, living gardens that inhabit so many of our different Look at how nice this fence is. I'm so happy about this. I actually think the person who replaced the uh, observatory here, Renee, actually came over and I think that she also did all of this because I don't remember being able to see my wolves from over here. So I love this. <laughs> Thank you so much, Renee. Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited about that because it involves some of my favorite things cooking in Minecraft and our zoo kitchen episodes and sharing the bounty with people and letting them go ahead and determine what they feel is fair for whatever they got in the picnic basket. So, all right, and we have a cute little mystery bug here, which is adorable. But yes, this is the picnic area, so you can come, refresh yourself, refuel, check out what's going on in the Redwood ex or Red Wolf exhibit. And if you follow the path, we have more benches and then nothing over here just yet, but, I do have some plans. I started to do kind of like a little wild area where we would have a bunch of carnivorous plants, like a whole bunch of pitcher plants. I'm not really sure about that. And I think I actually want to replace this whole bridge. Like I put everything down over here. I was starting to sort of experiment with what I wanted to do. We popped over here. There's an overlook on the river, uh, but I don't really like this section. I, I want to redo it. I want to have new things. And one of the new things I want to have is actually up this way you can see there is an entire section of our zoo over there that we haven't really touched and this is a little like a little like island output and what i want is i want to have a huge bridge i want to have a huge bridge going from this side to this side and that may be a job that I will give the builders of light or it may be something I want to do myself. I'll have to see, but a big, big bridge that will go across both ends and will help to connect it up. So eventually we can work our way over to this side of the zoo, which wraps around our really big lake and maybe start a museum over here. There is a little bit of rainforest blended with normal forest on this side. And when I was thinking about it, I think I would love to have a really beautiful museum that centers around this beautiful rainforest lake that we have. I'll show you guys later, but Chips and I are gonna be doing a lot of museum exploring. 
and it hit me, it would be really, really fun if we had a huge museum in a big open area of the zoo we haven't touched yet that people could go visit. And then every time Chips and I went in real life to go see a cool museum, we could add on another room or another wing, or we could build up or we could build down into the ground. And we could decorate that museum with some of the cool memories that we gathered from that trip. So I think that area might potentially be where we build the museum, but we'll have to do a little bit of two Ring, and you guys will have to like let me know what you think is a good spot but this is where I want a huge bridge connecting up those two places that'll be really pretty maybe built out of very woodland sort of materials and I was also thinking it would be really cool somewhere over here to have a giant waterfall like maybe it would be really cool to have a giant waterfall coming out of this spot and filling the river on both sides. So we could say that that is one of the places where the, the river is given life and restored. Who knows where the water comes from? Maybe some sort of spring. And maybe the bridge could go like over it or right next to it or turn into glass going over it so you could look down and see the river. But just the idea of seeing this huge waterfall in the forest is very appealing to me because I love stumbling on waterfalls in the forest whenever we would go walking in North Carolina. Oh my gosh, if you want to just like walk up to a waterfall at random, North Carolina is a good spot to do it. Uh, there's quite a few little waterfalls and then some big ones just out in the middle of nowhere. It's really nice. All right, so I'm going to wiggle this way. But those are some of my grand plans for that section of the zoo. And then over here is our last exhibit for the temperate forest area that we have finished the american black bear exhibit with an actual black bear inside check that out you can see her from over here and you can also come into this cave i need to figure out what i want to do with this cave maybe just like a decorative cave that people can learn some cool cave facts and then you can come over here and see some of the walnuts that hang down in her exhibit. You can see into her little uh, den that she has, one of the mini dens from a big tree trunk area that we made. You can safely touch some black bear fur right over here, made from one of the unfortunately deceased black bears that Tate killed yet again. He is very good at killing off my black bears. You can have a fun little view of her water side, like where we have the little waterfall of her exhibit and some of the beautiful gemstones that we left naturally in the ground when we were building there. That's why I leave these pieces too, because I think they're so pretty. And then this, I need to kind of hide a little better, but this is one of the zookeeper entrances. Okay, there we go one of the zookeeper entrances to get in to see what the black bear is up to. And it looks like she's over in her berry patch right now. Hey now, lady. None of that. I saw that kind of behavior. Eh? Yeah, you don't you don't need to you don't need to get so so upset. I really love your exhibit. It's full of berries which we can actually come in and harvest pretty soon cuz these are living gardens too. So they will continue to to grow and to spread and propagate and I might need to collect up a few of them. Hey, I see that. I see what you're doing. And then over here, we have a really cool spot where she can actually sharpen her claws. And bears will do that in the wild too. They'll have trees where they'll go pretty often to mark like their territory, to maybe spread some of their scent. I imagine to just like sharpen their claws or sort of scratch at them a little bit. And you can see where she has carved into the tree and has left big gouges in the tree, which I think is fun. There's some fossils we left in the ground because they were there when we were building. We've also got another nice little den so she can curl up in here if she would like. And then if we come over here, you can see more scratches and gouges in some of her favorite spot spots to scratch at her tree. And if we come up here, there is a little bit of an observation area. It's meant to be built for her in case she climbs up here. And I've actually seen her climb up the vines a couple times. And there's a bunch of berries so that she can kind of have a different view of her exhibit. I've not seen her use it very often, but black bears do actually climb trees. And you'll often see the cubs way up inside of a tree, especially if they get spooked and they'll hang out there and make their funny little barks waiting for their mom. So I really like her exhibit quite a bit. I just worry and always keep the dogs away because if you guys don't know how many times we have killed off Yogi the black bear, it's a little bit of a tragedy. <laughs> Let's just say my dogs and black bears do not mix. They do not mix at all. Uh, 
All right, and we've actually wrapped up the zoo tour of the temperate forest area that has animals, but we do have a little area I wanna show off to you guys next time. And then we'll double back around so we can visit the Tate and Tackle and we can see what's going on down there. And actually maybe the zoo tour is going a little bit faster than I thought it would, so huh. But I've really got some big projects I would like to give the Builders of Light. Hmm like that big giant bridge, the waterfall. I think that would be amazing. However, before we give them any more tasks, I do need to plant some of the flowers that they have given us. And I would like to show you guys where I want to house our cougar, which is definitely one of the animals I have been meaning to add back into our zoo for a very long time. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.